I'm telling you guys, once you guys figure out what you want to do, and if you're able to do that full time, get paid for it, try, try, try again. I love you guys all, and I want this for every single one of you guys. We live in 2018. It's possible, all right? What's going on, guys? Welcome to The Coach Malik Show. My name is Malik Benin, and I am going to be your virtual coach. Hi. I'm going to admire her. The tips. And, and he's awesome. So whatever he says to do, do it. Okay. Have a nice day. Thank you. All right. I just got a lot of work done at Rustic Bakery, and I don't do this that often. However, I just want to record this really quick. You know, whatever you have a passion of, whatever you have a desire to do, you know, you, we live in a world today where you can literally literally do whatever it is that you want to do and I highly recommend every single one of you guys at least try maybe you don't have the talent for it maybe you don't have the skills maybe you don't have the resources but at least try because I'm telling you this has been like a four-year journey for me this is the year where it's finally taken off where I'm finally able to do it full-time pay my bills and everything I need to pay for and I'm just telling you guys how happy I am and how blessed I am and how much I want that for every single one of you guys. Yeah, I don't do this too often, but I want to do it today. I was just at Rustic for about like, you know, four hours, five hours, and just grinding on stuff that, you know, is, is for the business, right? Just grinding on stuff, the online training, videos, content. I'm telling you guys, once you guys figure out what you want to do, and if you're able to do that full time, get paid for it, it's one of the best feelings in the world, I promise you. So whatever you do, Try, try, try again, again. It took me about four years for me to finally get above the edge for me to be able to do it full time. And I'm telling you guys, it's so worth it. It is so worth it. So give it a shot. Don't give up. If you ever need help with anything, let me know. Shoot me a message or put down in the comments. I love you guys all and I want this for every single one of you guys. You live in 2018. It's possible, all right? I'm telling you. Yeah, that's crazy. Dude, I'm, I'm literally gonna, cause I know your body probably like, you know, very well, more than any other like coach would. And um, I'm, li I'm literally going to write you the best program that you've ever had. How are you? Good, are you? Good, yeah. good, good to see you. Um, yeah, I'm gonna write you a program that you're gonna get fucking jacked off of, bro. Just cause I know your body, I know how it reacts. Yeah. Um, so you said you're not doing football this year? How are you? Great, how are you? Good. Good? Good. Are you doing a thing? Yeah. Are, huh? you, are you doing a thing? Yes. Okay, wait. Say hi. Hi. Say I'm going to admire her. I'm Corinne, and he's awesome. So whatever he says to do, do it. Okay. Thanks, Corinne. Have a nice day. Appreciate it, Corinne. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye, Corinne. Um, so, so, yeah. Sorry about that. Um, Welcome to another episode of The Coach Malik Show. Today we are talking about what you should be doing in between sets. A lot of people have been asking, you know, what should I do in between um, my sets? What should, should I be resting? Should I be doing active rest? Now, if you're doing something heavy, I do believe you should rest, but if you are not, you're trying to lose weight, these are great things that you can be doing during your rest time. This right here, if you're watching this on uh, YouTube or on the video, or if you are listening to this on the podcast, I am doing waiter carries, pretty much where you're carrying one dumbbell above your head, and you are walking anywhere from 20, 30, 40 yards one way, and then back to so alternating arms. And what this works on is your gait. So your walk, you know, these are things that a lot of people should be doing, <laughs> but aren't doing that much. So waiter carries are great. This next one, again, farmer carries, where you carry two dumbbells right by your side, kind of like you're carrying two suitcases kind of, 
uh, kind of just gave a little hint what the next one was, but um, these are great for grip strength, for keeping your heart rate high during your rest times. So farmer carries are great, highly recommended. And then the next one I do is a suitcase carry. So I am carrying one dumbbell on my side. Again, making sure my gait, making sure my walk is as normal as it could be obviously it's not going to be super normal with you carrying you know 50 60 70 pounds on the side as much possible um, normal walk as you can that's going to help improve you know your central nervous system your core and again your grip and if you're doing suitcase carry your core as well more things that you can do during your rest guys are body weight exercises so again if you're watching this if you're listening to this on the podcast i am doing single leg rdls right now you can do this i think a lot of you guys really need it it's going to work the back of your leg the hamstring and it's going to work your core and it's going to help you do deadlifts better because it's gonna work on your hip movement. Single leg RDLs, again, if you're listening to this on the podcast, look it up or go to The Coach Malik Show on YouTube and watch me on this episode of me doing these single RDLs. Again, very crucial. I think a lot of people need them. It's going to activate your glutes and a lot of you guys, it's gonna help with back pain. So again, the next exercise, body weight exercise in between rest I do is body weight squats. You can do very little reps and just work on range of motion, stretching it out, or you could do multiple reps 20, 30 in between sets. The next leg exercise, body weight exercise I do is hip bridges. You can do these with both feet, you can do these with single feet, but these are another great one that I think a lot of people need to do. Again, it's gonna work your core, it's gonna activate your glutes, it's gonna work on your hamstrings. We are sitting so much in our society these days, in our habits, to where working our hamstrings, we can't work our hamstrings anymore. Uh, Working our hamstrings is gonna help a lot of you guys with your back pain, with your leg pain, glute, um, IT band. Um, So single leg, hip bridges, highly recommended. Then I go on to stationary lunges great for resting. If you are resting, especially during leg day, and you need something to do to keep the heart rate up, stationary lunges, reverse lunges, which is what I do next, is a great exercise to do during your rest. Um, Again, it keeps the heart rate high. It's going to keep the blood flowing through the legs. Even if you're doing upper body, this is going to be a good way to incorporate legs in your upper body days. So now we go on to plank variations, all right? There are so many plank variations. Obviously, I'm not gonna get all of them, but there's planks on your elbows, planks on your hands, planks from elbows to hands. You know, I think the next one I do is plank with an arm raise and then plank with a toe tap, side planks. You know, there are so many different types of planks you can be doing during your rest. This is phenomenal and I highly recommend it. It is great work on your core, so it kind of like spices up core workouts you don't have to do it at the end do your three sets you know three rounds you just do them during your rest you know there's plank ups you know there's so many things you can do with planks highly recommend doing those in between your sets i hope you got something from this if you did leave a comment like and again i just want to say thank you one more time to every single one of you guys listening i can't appreciate you guys anymore hope you guys enjoy the rest of this video Allowing me to gain the weight fast, being like 60 pounds or what was it, 50 pounds? Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, that could be what that could be a reason. I did it when I was bulking, when I went from like 190 to 250. You saw that I got for pretty puffy too. Um, muscle was obviously there because you know weight was moving. Um, but uh, you know, in terms of the pictures and looking at photos, I was getting puffy as fuck. As much. So for you, I put you know 40%. I was doing like 50, 60% carbs. Like I was overdoing it. That's why I was able to gain like 60 pounds or what was it, 50 pounds in like four months. Um, it was just because I was 50, 60% carbs. So what I'm trying to do with you is twitch it and to gain more lean mass and lean bulk is just go more protein. Because with protein. When we're burning protein, it actually burns more calories burning protein than it does anything else. So when we're processing carbs, when we're processing fats, it doesn't, when we digest those, it doesn't burn as many calories as protein does. I don't know exactly, I think it's called a thermogenic, but don't quote me on that, but, uh, which means it heats up our internal body temperature, which again, burns more calories. So if we're eating, you know, the same amount of calories that we're eating now, and we're just switching, you know, the amount of carbs we're having into having more protein, we're gonna gain the same amount of weight, but now it's gonna be more lean weight. Does that make sense? The protein and chicken breast. Usually, it changes based off of obviously the size of the chicken breast, but on average, 
It's like 140 grams, which is pretty much like an average chicken breast size of your palm or 11. 43 grams of protein. So that would be, let's go 215 divided by 43. About five. But you know how I get it, I have to eat it all. <laughs> you don't have to have it all in chicken breast. Like you can have three chicken breasts, right? And then you'll have, so it'd be 85 grams of protein left. Your protein shake has how much protein? 60 grams in your protein shake. So it would literally just be three. Do you have any carbs in that protein shake? Cool. So it would literally be three chicken breasts and two, two protein shakes a day. Yeah, you no, know, core, core is very important. As soon as you get your core strong, everything else is gonna be a lot easier to do. Like the, your push movements, your push workouts, your leg workouts. As soon as your core is strong, I mean, not that it's not strong now, but once we get it stronger and stronger, your core is like, I like to say the center of mass, right? Because your stomach, your core is the center of your body. We get that strong and we're able to get everything else stronger from that. So that's why I like to focus on core workouts, especially in the beginning, because once we get your core strong, then automatically your, your upper body will be stronger, your lower body will be stronger. Not necessarily the muscles, but the way you're able to perform the exercises. Because your core is strong, you'll be able to do a push-up better. Because your core is strong, you'll be able to do a squat better. Because your core is strong, you'll be able to move around a lot easier. So that's why I like to focus on core first in the in the program design. We get on to our program, then we start focusing specifically on, all right, what do we need to work on our back? What do we need to work on our arms? What do we need to work on our legs? But it all starts with the core. Does that make sense? Yeah? How's, uh, how the grandparents, your parents? Tell them I said hi. How's, uh, how's Nabila? Or like you don't have to be at home? Technology, man, you gotta love technology, right? Oh my God. It should be really simple. Back that way, I got three on a shallow. You know what a shallow is? That's simple, you will never have shallow. This is why, he goes, quarterback runs, there's nobody left. We got 18 guys chasing one little pinner over here. 